Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. So, guys, uh, from a conversation I had yesterday, we feel now that NATO is over, or at least it's scraping into irrelevancy. We've got uh, more on Russian sabotage, assassination attempts, espionage. You know, Hungary have come out and they don't support the NATO alliance. China, NATO conflict. Guys, that is escalating and I feel yesterday will be a pivotal point in the context that when we look forwards in time and we see these things developing, we can say that yesterday it happened and we'll talk about that. Guys, I've got something that's like absolutely ridiculous and wild and insane and I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't even going to talk about it and I wouldn't talk about it if it wasn't so absolutely peculiar and I don't know if it's real but I'll save that to the end. I don't know if it's real or I don't know if it's just Russian propaganda guys but I'll save that till the end. So just quickly guys before we begin it turns out that there was lots of uh, payment systems going down yesterday. I don't want to dwell on it. All I will say is that the gold standard for any hacking, any cyber attack is to collapse the financial system, you know, or cause a bank run, you know, and these are the things you're going to see um, increase over time. So guys, NATO then, you know, I don't know how to put this, I don't know where, where I don't even know how to start this. So yesterday I was on a group call with, a, you know, a few various people, you know, and we came to the conclusion that well, what we was discussing is these bilateral agreements that countries are having now between themselves. For example, I mean, the main one we were discussing is the Ukraine, Poland, um, you, know, you know, between those two countries, they've got an agreement. Now, if more countries start to have these agreements, then what are they doing? They're forming their own alliances. So the NATO alliance, it starts to become irrelevant because, you know, if countries start to have these agreements outside of NATO, then the legal structure of NATO, it, 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 it becomes irrelevant. So as we move forwards, you know, people are saying, you know, some people are saying, oh, NATO will never do this. And yet that might be true. But the countries in NATO are free to make security packs, you know, on their own with other countries. So I think that's the way we're going in. Well, it is the way we're going in Europe. It's not it's not what I think. It, you know, it, it's there. It's evident for everyone to see. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. The UK situation is obviously different to Poland. So, you, you know, if we try and say, oh, the UK and Poland should have the same set of um, justifications, reasons and, you know, um, motivations, it, it becomes ridiculous because Poland is right there on the border with Ukraine and it's got has a border with Belarus, you know, so their military position has to be different to the UK, you know, and then so you can't really tie them into NATO only. So it makes perfect sense for Poland, the Baltic states, all these countries with borders with Russia who feel a threat. Now, I don't want to get into the argument about is Russia a threat or not. I think it is, but I know there's a lot of people who don't see it as a threat. Um, you know, so it becomes very difficult to say to Poland, you have to act the same way as the UK. Equally, it's very difficult for people to say to the UK, guys, you need to act the same way as uh, Finland, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, um, you know, Poland, you know, um, and start conscription, start to build your military. When the reality is the UK is so far away from this, you know, eastern border, we're kind of in the same position as the Americans are. Whereas we're not under imminent threat from, you know, we're not under Im imminent threat of troops and tanks rolling out over our borders where those other countries are. So as you're seeing now, other countries making these, you know, these security packs, it kind of makes um, NATO irrelevant, you know. Also in, um, you know, we've spoke about this before, but a lot more has come out of this now, guys. All right. So I spoke like months and months ago about the potential of um, paid criminal gangs, but what they're calling them now is like paid amateurs or something. Uh, guys, you know, wh when I mention these things, I, I mention them in my own words and then the MSM comes out and they give them a little phrase and a little tone. So when I said like months ago that, you know, that you're not going to use these tuxedo wearing guys, what I meant is, you know, exactly what they're saying now on mainstream media about these paid amateurs. But it's come out that there's been recent assassination attempts on the uh, on arms manufacturers 
in Germany. Let me just quickly read you, and I'll, t I'll give you some um, speculation on this as well. Now, I believe, although I'm not 100% confident that this was the CEO of Rheinmetall, US intelligence discovered earlier this year that the Russian government planned to assassinate the chief executive of a powerful German arms manufacturer that has been producing artillery shells and military vehicles for Ukraine, according to five US and Western officials familiar with the episode. The plot was, guys, um, you know, for those people who don't think this is a thing, if you live in the UK, we know it's a thing because these things have happened in the UK before. The plot was one of a series of Russian plans to assassinate defence industry executives across Europe who were supporting Ukraine's war effort. So this article is just um, identifying the, this one German incident, although, you know, it says there to assassinate industry executives across Europe. Could this be the UK? Could this be other places? You know, so I think this threat, you know, this threat is certainly real. These sources said the plan to, um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to mention his name guys, but it's in the article. Um, a white-haired Goliath who has led the German manufacturing charge in support of Ukraine was the most mature. So the plot to assassinate this guy was the most mature. Now, you know, the, the, the US military have stepped in, the German intelligence services have stepped in. It seems like this threat is, people are starting to take it seriously now in, um, you know, on mainland Europe. Guys, be under no illusion, this will come to the UK. Uh, when Americans learned of the effort, they informed Germany whose security services were then able to protect Papa Gare, or whatever his name is, and foiled the plot. A high-level German government official also commented, confirmed that Berlin was warned by the plot by the US. For more than six months, here we are guys, Russia has been carrying out sabotage campaigns across Europe, largely by proxy. So that means that the Russians have not been getting involved themselves, they've been paying other people. And guys, criminal gangs, these are the people they're going to pay, you know, they don't care who these criminal gangs are, who their alliances are. You know, these criminal gangs, if you give them money, they will do criminal activity. You know, it kind of says it on the tin. Um, it has recruited local amateurs for everything from arson attacks on warehouses linked to arms for Ukraine to petty acts of vandalism. Guys, I said this was would happen like months ago, you know. You're seeing it now, and guys, being under no illusion, this will 100% come to the UK. Now, this also comes as time when the US military bases were placed on high alert, you know, after sabotage threats against uh, facilities, against personnel. So you see this game of espionage, you know, it's really ratcheting up in mainland Europe, and I've no doubt this is ratcheting up in the UK. You know, we, excuse me. I did the top 10 video a while ago where I identified, you know, um, cyber, water, electricity, gas. You know, I, you know, I, did, I gave a top 10 and I mentioned all these things. And what you've got to look at is what is a soft target? What gives, what, what has minimum risk for maximum, you know, uh, maximum reward? So things like our food supply, things like our water supply, things like the electricity, the gas, you know, what's minimum risk and easy to do? Guys, and there's so many of these things in the UK, it becomes really, you know, really, really difficult to, try. when you start identifying these things, you're like, wow, there's so much that, you know, what do they call them? Um, paid, uh, local, uh, so much that these local amateurs could affect off from our day-to-day -day lives. It's not looking good. So there's also cracks starting to appear now in NATO. And if you go back to what I said originally about, you know, the irrelevance of NATO now, it bec it's become irrelevant if these, you know, if countries are making bilateral security agreements, then the whole premise of NATO becomes like, well, why do we need NATO if we've already got these, you know, already got these agreements and we've already allied to, you know, without NATO to, you know, to protect ourselves. And guys, this is why we're going to see this diversions, you know, um, you're going to get, it may not be NATO on the tin, 
that is fighting this war in Europe. It may be the, I don't know, NATO B or NATO White or a smaller amount of NATO countries that are not with NATO that have said, right, we're, this is not part of NATO, this is a Europe, Eastern European problem with support from the UK, France and Germany or something like that. But that's what you're going to see because there's cracks starting to appear in NATO. You know, the Hungarians have come out and they've said that they don't want NATO to be an anti-China block. And, you know, you're just seeing these diversions happen between, um, you know, between East and West, basically. And, you know, and then China's come out in, you know, China's come out in response to the rhetoric yesterday at the NATO summit by, what's his name, Jan Stoltenberg or whatever his name is. I'll actually read it, you guys, hang on. China will, hang on, yeah. China will never accept the unfounded accusations of NATO that Beijing is a decisive enabler of Russia's war against Ukraine, Foreign Minister Wang Yi said. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I think that name's funny, Wang Yi. So yesterday it came out and, you know, NATO said that China was a decisive enabler of Russia's war against Ukraine. You know, Guys, you know, it just is what it is. China can sell their kit and equipment to whoever they want. You know, we, we need to just accept that this is, you know, we just need to accept what's coming and stop pointing fingers because it, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's kind of like saying, China, sell us your solar panels, but don't sell them to anyone else. You, you know, you can't tell a sovereign country who they can or cannot sell their goods to. What you can do is stop buying their goods. As a sovereign country, we can stop buying Chinese goods. Are we going to? Absolutely not, because, you know, we get a lot of cheap goods and we like our cheap goods. But that's the reality of the situation. NATO, a military alliance of 32 North American and European countries, issued a declaration after a three-day summit in Washington on the 75th anniversary of the bloc's formation. With its No Limits partnership with Russia and its large-scale support for its defence industri industrial base, China has become a war enabler, the communique said. The NATO members urged China to cease all material and political support for Russia's war effort. You know, it, it, again guys, you know, we can't be pointing the finger and telling people who they can and cannot sell, you know. Um, you know, goods to. Are Russia telling the Chinese they can't sell, you know, their goods to the Ukrainians, they can't sell their goods to the BRICS? Because guys, let's be under no illusion. All these drones that are being made in the UK and sent to Ukraine, guess where their parts are coming from? I tell you what guys, they're not coming from Birmingham, they're not coming from Manchester, they're not coming from Leeds or London, they're all coming from China. Why? Because it's a lot cheaper. The NATO declaration on Wednesday came as the... Have I read this? No. The NATO declaration came on Wednesday as the alliance, which has historically focused on security in Europe and North America, has also seen engagements from the US... Remember that, guys. So remember the US allies in Asia. What we're seeing now is, you know, we are seeing this diversions where the US is going to stop with the war in Ukraine and they're going to focus on this Asia Middle East. Guys, I said it before in another video, the US does not want to break their spear in Europe. Including Japan, South Korea and New Zealand as they are not part of the military alliance. So, you know, you may get another alliance come that is the US, Japan, South Korea, New Zealand. I think Australia would be part of that alliance as, yeah, of course it would. Australia would be part of that alliance as well. You know, the, the, um, the Pacific Alliance or something. Whereas NATO, you're going to get this NATO light with all the European countries making these little blocks. So when we're looking at NATO doctrine and Article 5, Article 4 issues... Guys, it's all irrelevant now because people are making their own agreements, they're making their own alliances, they're making their own pacts. So, I guess it's all, I, guys, I, I think it's over for NATO, I really do. The leaders of these three countries joined the summit 
for the third year in a row as the war in Ukraine pitted the West against Russia and its friends and bolstered the argument for closer cooperation between the US, Europe and their Asian allies. In a phone call with the Foreign Minister of the Netherlands, Kasper Veldkamp, that sounds like a solid name, Mr. Wan, <laughs> sorry guys, sorry guys, I will not laugh when Mr. Wang's talking. Mr. Wang said, China absolutely does not accept the groundless accusations made at the recent summit in Washington against China. NATO should stay within its bounds and refrain from interfering in Asia Pacific affairs or China's internal affairs. Guys, I can't read any more from Mr. Wang. Um, but guys, you're starting to see now this, you know, this rhetoric building up and yesterday is going to be a key point that we're all going to be able to look back at and say, right guys, this is when this rhetoric between NATO, China, NATO light, this US alliance that's going to start forming in the Pacific. Um, it's all going to come from yesterday, guys. That, you know, that is, that's when it happened, guys. When, you know, when NATO said this, uh, what do they call them? Um, what do they call them? A decisive enabler. That's going to be the key phrase that's going to be pushed forwards. And when these these new alliances are made and people stop, I mean, NATO won't be over. It will just be like pieces of paper that nobody really bothers about because they're irrelevant now. So that's what's going to happen, guys. And, we, and we're seeing it laid out in, for, in front of us. So, guys, the funny ones now. I don't know whether this is Russian propaganda or whether this re is really happening. I asked my friends in Ukraine, they said they've not heard of it, but I'm going to. I'm going to read it anyway. Oh, guys, and how can we forget? How can we forget Joe Biden? I love that guy. You know, he introduced um, President Zelensky at, at the NATO meeting. P President Biden's, uh, he's, he's introduced Zelensky on the stage as Vladimir, um, Vladimir uh, as President Putin. Guys, I, you know, whatever you think about America, whatever you think about, you know, Joe Biden, he needs to be with his family. You know, you know, he's an old guy. He needs to be with his family. He shouldn't be there. You know, and I'm not, I'm not hating on him. I'm saying, you know, if he was your granddad or whatever, you wouldn't want him to be there because he can't do the job. You know, can you imagine if Trump did that? You know, there'd be, a, there'd be outrage. There, you know, there'd be people, there'd be protests on the street. But you no, know, it's just like you know, we've just come, become accustomed to. Um, so here you are, guys, President Putin. No, no, not President Putin. What's your name again? Zelensky. Yeah, Zelensky. But, you know, it, it is what it is, guys. You know, now, here we are, guys. Russia-Ukraine war. Why people are getting legs broken by doctors. I don't know if this is true. Local media in report, in, has reported um, advertisements on Telegram which offered a unique opportunity to avoid mobilization without leaving the country and featured images of legs and arms wrapped in bandages. Russia Today has reported. So guys, th there is some propaganda there, but you know, I just, you know, I, I can't imagine, I, I can't imagine this happening, but I don't know if it's happening or not. But you know, I'm, you know, I was thinking, you know, I'll, you know, at what point do you think, right, I'm going to go and see a doctor and he's going to break my leg and I'm going to have to have it in a pot. And, you know, how much is that service? Is this service going to be in the UK when, you know, when if, if conscription happens here? I don't know, guys. Have a read of the article yourself. Tell me what you guys think. And that is it, guys. Remember, it's Friday. Stuff normally happens on a Friday. Why? People have gone home. People have gone home early. The stock markets have closed. Um, you know, so... Uh, when these big incidents happen, if people have bet against it or don't want it to um, make too much trouble in the stock market, you know, you've got um, Saturday, Sunday when it's closed where it can either readjust or people can lose even more money when it opens or earn, it, earn even more money when the stock market reopens on a Monday. So, guys, things normally happen on a Friday. You know, I, I did this on our other platform. Literally, it was so funny. I said this on our on our other platform, I said, guys, be aware, things normally happen on a Friday, and I, I named several things, and then, you know, they came back with things like, 9-11 wasn't on a Friday, and this wasn't on a Friday, and then literally, the next Friday hap the next Friday afterwards, there was a huge event, um, and yeah, it, it just happens. Things normally happen on a Friday, guys. Guys, that is it. I'm going to Mac to Grid. Leave me a comment, leave me a like, and don't forget to share my stuff.